In 2003, the epidemic of SARS caused great harm to Taiwan's healthcare system. When the outbreak of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, commonly known as COVID-19, started in China, Taiwan enacted its disease prevention and control measures early on. Protecting healthcare workers is a very important component in containing the COVID-19 epidemic, as they are the most likely to have patient contacts. From the very beginning, Kaohsiung Medical University Chonghe Memorial Hospital, also known as KMUH, monitored the development of this disease while at the same time cautiously designed and planned strategies for epidemic prevention and control. On January 21st, the first imported case of COVID-19 was announced in Taiwan. The hospital immediately elevated their incident command group structure to the highest administration level. Superintendent Ho Ming Fong is the commander-in-chief and oversees four command teams, medical care team, nursing care team, infection control team, and administration team. They work in coordination for the planning and implementation of COVID-19 related measures. The hospital gradually carried out various containment efforts, including establishment of an incident command group, employee education, employee travel management, SOPs for suspected cases, simulation drills and audits, process control of wards, outpatient clinics, and examination units, public access control and patient triage guidelines, PPE inventory control, hospital communication guidelines, environmental cleansing and control. KMUH expedited the procurement process to purchase an infrared body temperature monitor. On Chinese New Year Eve, they were the first hospital in Taiwan to implement public access control and set up a body temperature check station. The hospital implemented public access control by limiting entry to two entrances. At night, public access control, such as checking to see if you have patient companion cards, is conducted by hospital security guards. Mm -hmm. There are five steps before entering the hospital. Step 1. Wear a mask. Step 2. Check body temperature. Step 3. Provide your national health insurance card to staff where they will review your travel, occupation, contact, and cluster history and get your hand stamped. Step 4. If you have any symptoms and or with TOCC, you will be directed to the outdoor clinic or emergency department. Step 5. Properly apply hand sanitizer. However, public access control requires sufficient manpower. As many as 120 employees on various shifts rotations are needed daily. The administration team is responsible for providing an adequate supply of inventory to prevent disruptions. Volunteer services have not stopped. Our wheelchair service has been moved outside of the main entrance, and our wonderful volunteers help escort patients with mobility problems into the hospital while family members are parking. They also help us by guiding the public with directions on how to enter or leave the hospital and use shuttle buses. In cases of unaccompanied patients, our volunteers take turns to accompany the patients throughout their entire visit. On February 3rd, the hospital opened an outdoor outpatient clinic specifically for patients without fever, respiratory symptoms returning from China, Hong Kong, and Macau that need medical treatment for other diseases. This provided them with a safe and convenient way to see the doctor, take blood tests, and obtain medications. With the gradual severity of the epidemic, the outdoor outpatient clinic shifted its care to any individuals who returned to Taiwan from any high-risk countries or epidemic areas with medical needs. We hope to stop the epidemic at the doors. Hemodialysis patients need to come to the hospital three times a week. If there is an outbreak in the hospital, it will inevitably lead to a large-scale isolation crisis. To prevent this, the patient lounge is temporarily closed and the outdoor seating area has been adjusted to prevent group gatherings. We also have all-day air conditioning with a three-shift disinfection policy, limitations for accompanying companions, and constantly performed temperature checks. To further reduce the risk for our staff and patients, 
we are reviewing our patient appointments and schedule surgeries. Prior to their appointments, we call the patient to check their TOCC within the last 14 days. If there are any concerns, the examination or surgery is temporarily postponed. To reduce the number of individuals entering the hospital, the Department of Pharmacy set up an outdoors drive through for refillable prescriptions for patients with chronic diseases. This service can be requested through the clinic, hospital website, and mobile APP. The Department of Pharmacy prepares the medication one day prior to scheduled pickup date and places the medications at the outdoors drive through Individuals can walk or use the drive through to pick up their medications. For refrigerated medications, a thermometer automatically takes readings every 10 minutes in the refrigerator cold box for the staff to monitor. An average of 335 refillable prescriptions are picked up per day via the drive through demonstrating its potential effectiveness on rerouting patients. In the face of the epidemic, the emergency department began preparations ahead of time and started double-layer triage with temperature monitoring through the forehead thermometer gun and an infrared temperature monitor. Patients are required to fill in an easy-read TOCC screening form combined with verbal inquiry of medical history and NHI car cloud data inquiry. We adopted a highly rigorous process with technology to strengthen triage guidelines. For primary triage, suspected cases are guided to the outdoor single room isolation tents or indoor negative pressure isolation wards. A weather canopy for the walkway and mobile toilets were added. Outdoor decontamination rooms for incidents with toxic chemicals has been altered to an outdoor x-ray and shower room. At the same time, the ambulance decontamination area has also been readjusted. The hospital has established a comprehensive and consistent TOCC management mechanism for employees. In addition to the TOCC census, department heads check in with their staff on a daily basis. Employees are asked to actively report their travel history and contact history online. All employees must pass the NHI car authentication before entering the hospital for their work shift. On February 17th, an employee care clinic was established. Employees who have traveled recently to any countries with travel warnings or signs of the epidemic are arranged to test for COVID-19 and a chest x-ray. Results need to be negative with no symptoms before returning to work. As of February 28th, a total of 152 employees tested negative. The risk of infection, annual domestic foreign company trips were stopped at the onset of the outbreak. Restricting employees' travel during the epidemic is needed to protect the manpower of hospital staff and the health of the people. The Human Resources Office have prepared vacation extension measures to allow employees to take their leave after the epidemic eases. Registered nurses are divided into different floors and buildings with each war as a unit to perform group and partitioning care management to protect the essential nursing manpower. Employees working the high-risk care team are provided with nutritional supplements and food. On January 28th, a resting area for the high-risk care team was set up, allocating one person per room with basic necessities such as a TV and a refrigerator. The administrative team developed an epidemic education training module for the employee staff. As of February 5th, 4,398 employees have completed their face-to-face -face or online training. A section of the hospital's website has been designated solely for COVID-19 updates for employees. New registered nurses that started working after February had epidemic education and training on the day of orientation and participated in the latest updates of epidemic prevention and control after class. Relevant updates were also provided in each unit each day. At the end of the winter vacation, nearly 200 healthcare students from medicine, dentistry, etc. were enrolled to start their hospital placement. Before entering clinical practice, students had to complete a series of online courses and provide details of their travel history, contact history, and health status. Students also had face-to-face -face lectures in a safe learning environment about COVID-19, the implementation of infection control measures, and health management. Contracted employees at hospital include housekeeping, security, funeral services, food court, and nearly 400 service personnel. The management unit set up a line group to provide consistent epidemic communication. 
In order to maintain the safety of housekeeping staff, six training courses of PPE were held. 195 contracted employees were trained with a completion rate of 100%. The infection control team provided employees, hospital staff, contractors, caregivers, and volunteers with online, face-to-face -face epidemic education that included proper hand washing techniques and the use of PPEs. Continuous education for staff can also help reduce the fear of the unknown. All frontline staff had to undergo N95 fit testing to make sure they had a secure, well-fitted mask for their work shift. Special units such as the cardiac catheterization room or digital angiography room have also added additional PPEs adjusted to the needs of the unit. The anesthesia team are using powered air purifying respirators for patients in critical conditions and need an endotracheal tube to reduce the risk of infection. The hospital's psychological care team are providing immediate psychological support and emotional care to frontline staff of the high-risk care team. They have also opened up a COVID-19 mental health clinic to provide any employees with psychological assistance and or follow-up care. The integrated employee care system offer workplace support and various types of resources to reduce the psychological burden of frontline staff during the epidemic. On January 22nd at 8 a.m., the incident command team and structure was formally established. Meetings are held twice a day and the department heads of the hospital and relevant units are invited to participate. Hospitals use instant messaging and video conferencing to discuss and stay updated on global situation. In response to the rapid changes of COVID-19, rolling management has been implemented to correct and strengthen epidemic efforts. These preemptive preparations and measures are combined efforts to provide a safe environment for patients and hospital staff. PPE goods are important for epidemic prevention and control efforts. The hospital's material management office calls relevant health authorities, suppliers, etc. to understand the current supplies of PPEs and order accordingly to the situation. The PPE supply chain is confirmed during transit and upon arrival on a daily basis. If there are any abnormalities, the supplier is contacted immediately. If there is an urgency to purchase PPEs, the hospital directly contacts the manufacturer to confirm the quantity and arrival time. Hospital staff currently receive their mask supply from the government. When the mask supply is ready to be picked up, the relevant health authority will send out a notification. The hospital staff picks up the supply and keys in the inventory into the IT system and reports to the Kaohsiung city government. All PPEs must be prioritized for supply. Units providing direct care are the first priority, followed by support and general units. All receiving units must sign for their mask supply before 2 p.m. every day. Each unit will actively report the consumption and inventory of PPEs. Material Management Office keeps track of the quantity at real time and reports the situation at every incident command meetings. In order to ensure the reliability of the negative pressure exhaust air of the rooms, the construction and engineering office added a negative pressure exhaust support fan and an alarm system. The HEPA box was changed to a back-in and back-out filter system. The hospital rewired the switchboard and provided additional power sources for the necessary epidemic facilities and equipment. Additional to the negative pressure isolation rooms, a de-isolation ward 6C was set up on January 26, and if necessary, it could be adjusted to a suspected case buffer ward. The names and contact numbers of the patient's companions are added to the patient's records. Through the assistance of the IT system, companions must undergo TOCC checks and mask delivery was carried out daily in accordance with hospital policies. In addition to the hospital five-step entry process, war care has also strengthened the implementation of daily temperature checks, mask protection, verification of foreign worker documentation, and updating the central government cloud. 
ICU visiting hours have been limited to one time slot per day from January 27th, and visiting hours of the general acute wards have been limited to two slots per day from March 2nd. In addition, the psychiatric team conducts a psychological assessment to quarantine patients through a remote telephone and imaging system to relieve their anxiety. When the National Health Insurance Administration released the NHI epidemic system, the IT department immediately set up NHI card readers at the public access points, triage areas, and the emergency department. If the individual has recent travel or contact and cluster history, an alert will immediately pop up to inform the staff. Patient records are hidden from public view to maintain privacy. In order to facilitate containment efforts, the IT and nursing department work together to alter the nursing cart into a screening equipment cart composed of the NHI card reader and PPE. Before dawn, the IT staff sets up the cart, which acts as the healthcare gatekeeper. IT also helps set up the outdoor internet services by forming a cooperation between a multitude of departments, parking lots, and outdoor infrastructure. Medical personnel are able to provide medical services to quarantine patients through our advanced technology. Remote around-the-clock care and consultation is provided to the patient through a non-contact life detection system applied thermal and laser technology with which monitors patient activity, temperature, heartbeat, and breathing rate. This reduces the risk of medical staff entering, leaving the ward, and the consumption of PPE. There is also an electronic handwritten signature system that allows patients to sign consent forms using a tablet, avoiding doubts about service transmission from paper consent forms. There is dedicated elevator for suspected cases and biohazard waste. To make sure each building was prepared, three additional clearly labeled epidemic-only elevators were added on top of the original emergency elevator to the negative pressure isolation wards. If there is a suspected case, the cleaning staff must wear PPEs, N95 masks, face shields, and gloves to disinfect the hospital environment, elevators, and outdoor tents. On February 6, the Environmental Protection Section formed an emergency response kit and high standard disinfection guidelines. All epidemic related wastes are packaged in double layers and transported through the designated hospital routes and elevators to the temporary outdoor biohazardous waste storage area. The waste is processed by a legal agency and discharged from the hospital. In order to avoid indoor dining and prevent cluster infections, the food court has shifted to take out only. Staff transportation vehicles and shuttle buses are cleaned every four hours. Public areas such as elevators and escalators have increased the cleaning frequency to every two hours. Commonly used areas such as ATMs, automatic counters, cashiers, information desks are cleaned at regular intervals, and handheld ATP devices are used for sample testing to ensure that the environment is clean to avoid transmission. Before staff can enter the negative pressure isolation ward and begin care for suspected patients, the infection disease team has to confirm that each personnel has the correct PPE on and undergone proper epidemic training. Hand hygiene is the key to preventing COVID-19. In order to ensure that all employees have good hand hygiene habits, the infectious te disease team arranged secret audits and the results are reported to the superintendent, directors, and department heads regularly. A hand washing screensaver has also been added to staff computers. The infection control team audits the implementation of infection control measures every week. A total of 700 audits has been performed. The unit also includes outpatient examination rooms in addition to the emergency ward. The audit includes physicians, nurses, and technicians. If a measure is not implemented or unclear, instructions will be given immediately. The department is re-educated and then re-audited to confirm the skills of these healthcare workers. A summary of common errors are provided to the staff so they may refer to them at any time.
COVID-19 is diagnosed in a molecular biological manner and is detected by real-time quantitative RT-PCR. When handling the specimen, laboratory staff are required to wear proper PPE. The biosafety operation cabinet in the pressure isolation laboratory is used for medical examination and extraction. Additional nucleic acid automatic extraction instruments have been purchased to reduce the possibility of sample contamination. It takes 90 minutes to analyze every 12 samples. At present, the extraction and consortium inspection staff jointly perform the COVID-19 test. The maximum test volume is 140 pieces per day. Our Department of Laboratory Medicine is prepared to meet the demand if cases arise. It is imperative to implement border control as the situation becomes more severe. The Taiwan CDC has cooperated with six southern Taiwan medical centers to mobilize a team of epidemic prevention personnel. On February 27th, they set up a collection and inspection station at the Kaohsiung airport exit where passengers are checked for fever and upper respiratory symptoms. It is very important to monitor the development of COVID-19. The Public Affairs Office collects daily epidemiological information, provides the incident command group with updates, and provides easy reposters for the patients and public. The current mode of transmission of COVID-19 has not been scientifically proven. It can only be handled based on past SARS and MERS experiences. The current effective policy for infectious disease control lies within patient management, effective personnel protective equipment, frequent hand washing, and environmental cleaning and disinfection. It is indispensable. I would like to thank our colleagues of the Central Epidemic Command Center, led by Minister Chen Shizhong, of the Ministry of Health and Welfare for their support and guidance. Taiwan has been quite successful under their leadership. Advanced planning and implementation of epidemic prevention and control measures at Kaohsiung Medical University Chonghe Memorial Hospital are actively coordinated under the guidance of the Central Epidemic Command Center. At the moment, there has been no spread of COVID-19 to our employees, families, or patients. After a gloomy day comes a bright day, and there is always light at the end of the tunnel. I hope everyone can stay safe and healthy through this epidemic, and I wish you all well. Thank you.